Hey everyone, I'm Lisa Pickering and welcome to the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. This season was all about the people's choice and thanks to your nominations, we've put together a list of 10 individuals who left you wanting to know more. Remember, the list is in no particular order, save for the final person who we will reveal as 2016's most fascinating person at Bermuda. What makes someone fascinating? This is the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. Sponsored by 1. Mod Blue Boutique and the Trades Women of Bermuda. Hosted by Lisa Pickering. Five-time America's Cup winner, CEO of America's Cup, Team Oracle, and gold medal Olympic sailor Sir Russell Coote's resume speaks for itself. But what about the man behind the cup? We sat down with Sir Coots to find out what drives him and to hear more about his ambition to create a legacy, ensuring every 9 to 12 year old right here in Bermuda is given the opportunity to learn to sail. You had said that technology had attracted quite a bit of audience participation and members to the different events, uh, but you're still working on the human interest side of things. That's right. So I know your father uh, inspired you in the early days, but what are your earliest memories of sailing? Well, I was, I was fortunate that my father provided the platform, really. You know, in, in those days, uh, he built the boat or boats at home. So that was kind of a family event in itself, you know, painting the boat in the, in the lounge, actually, <laughs> sneaking it in when, when uh, mum wasn't looking, and, literally, and uh, painting, the, painting the boat. And it was, it was a great time because we got to go to different places together obviously sailing you're on the ocean so it's a nice environment i look back with very fond memories of of all of those times you know is it a long time a long-standing family tradition was it your it was a long father? time ago if that was your <laughs> <laughs> no i wasn't going to say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but did your father's father also build boats he certainly came from a boating um, family uh, and my grandmother was actually a, even a keen sailor so, so there, there was boating was in the in the family traditions, if you like. When I grew up as a young kid, we didn't live beside the water. Later on, we did, and so it was it was a lot easier, easier and accessible. But in the early days, we didn't live alongside the water. You know, apart from my father's interest, there was no great reason for us to be interested in sailing. Uh, so I was lucky in that regard. Uh, I was lucky to get the opportunity to experience it as a kid. So how did it hold your interest then? There's other sports that were probably more accessible to you then. Well, I was always taken by the, this, you know, I guess the power of the, of the wind and the uh, interaction you have with the wind and the waves. You know, I also, even as a young kid, liked racing. It, 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 I liked that competition of being out there, you know, racing against other kids and also challenging yourself with the wind conditions. Being out, even as a young kid, on very windy days was was something I've, I've got a recollection of and and a fond re recollection of you know being almost just outside your comfort zone. Well you often talk about the geometry or the geography uh, the physics side of things and the environmental side of things it sounds like it's there's a lot more than just the physical side to the sport. I think good sailors you know are constantly asking themselves why they're experiencing certain things or why they're observing certain things it would be very, very difficult to sail the absolutely perfect race. You would have to steer across every wave perfectly. You'd have to see every wind shift perfectly. You'd have to hit it at the right moment. You'd have to react perfectly to all those environmental features that, that, that are out there on the race course. Now you compared sailing almost to a game of chess on the water. Yeah. What makes a champion sailor? Oh, that's a difficult question you know, because I think there's a lot of factors. Um, uh, obviously in big teams, teamwork is, is essential and, and, and sailing is a real teamwork um, sport because there's lots of decisions and lots of different strategies you can take. It teaches you a lot about leadership. And you're teaching that now to the young people yeah. here in Bermuda with an um, Endeavour program. With America's Cup Endeavour we, we definitely had an objective to, to make it much more accessible to a much wider group of young people young people. It's really an educational focus, so we take some of the math and physics and um, environmental pieces and, you know, obviously there's a beauty to it too, there's an artistic component as well, so we incorporate that into it and, and 
teach these kids through real experiences on the water about some of the more um, uh, you know complex complex things that they can be dealing with with, with those topics and and learning it in a fun way. Sir John Swan uh, actually brought in a very good point: getting these these different kids from different backgrounds to interact with each other. Right. And when you put them in, in many ways, when you put them together on on a boat, there's no better. Um, environment to, to actually develop that, that, those, uh, those skills, you know, you really have to work together as a team. Now that's an interesting point that you made just about the students and children from different backgrounds interacting with one yeah. another. There's still kind of that stigma that sailing is for the elite, for the wealthy. Yeah. Do you think that sailing will ever be perceived differently? Well, the truth is that it, that it, that it isn't. And, and I think people on the island now are starting to see that with AC Endeavour. You know, if I use myself as an example, or Jimmy Spittle, or most of the other um, sailors that will that, be racing in the America's Cup these days, most of them are not from privileged or wealthy backgrounds. Uh, they have, in some ways, like myself, been lucky to have a connection with the sea. Um, but it does have that stigma um, around it that, that you have to be wealthy to sail. And, we're breaking those old attitudes down. That we're, we're taking away the stuffiness of the, in inverted commas, yacht club type right. perception, making it more accessible to people to get out there and enjoy the environment that, that they've got. I mean, in Bermuda, let's face it, I can't think of many examples that are really better than, than, than what you've got here. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a fantastic marine environment. So to give these kids the opportunity to experience that and, and I'm not talking about necessarily making, you know, we, we certainly don't have the objective to try and make all of them first class racers. But for the most part, we just want um, uh, these kids to experience um, something that they wouldn't have otherwise perhaps had the chance to do. Uh, I just hate the thought of it being restricted to a, to, a, to, a, to a small group. You had said in an interview that you wished you were 25 years younger. So, uh, <laughs> well, because doesn't the... everyone. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, 20. Yeah. <laughs> 20 would be nice. Uh, but you had said that sailing had become yeah. a lot more interesting. Um, what part would you like to most participate in now if you were younger? It's always been interesting. But I think it's a, it's a, it's a fun era now. Any era that, that there's been a, a, almost a revolution and there's been you know, some gigantic new discoveries, um, or should I say, not really new discoveries, but, but because you know, hydrofalling's been around for a long time. But all of a sudden, I think people have started to realise the, the, the real impact of that. But what an exciting time for a young racer. These modern America's Cup boats have stimulated a, a strong interest in, in sailing as well. And, uh, you know, I mean, the boats look cool, and they are cool, and, you know, they are pretty, you know, really exciting to sail. So, yeah, if I was, if I could turn the clock back 25 years, would I be doing this? Absolutely. Absolutely I would. You know, I think it'd be fantastic. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on burnnews.com to find out who else made the list of the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016.